I, I'm very thankful that I was awake for everything. After I was knocked unconscious briefly after the bomb blast. I I don't remember flying through the air, and I don't remember actually hitting the ground. But I remember waking up on the ground, still hearing rocks falling, rocks hitting the ground, rocks hitting metal. So it sounded like a hailstorm. Seeing my injuries, hearing my friend next to me fighting for his life, um, I was I was quite certain that I was going to die that day. And so fast forward to when I woke up at Walter Reed, I saw that my, both of my legs had been completely amputated. I had casts on my arms. Uh, I was told that I may not walk again because my pelvis had been broken so badly. They weren't optimistic that I would be able to, that the pelvis could support the prosthesis that I would be oh, wow. required to wear to, to be able to ambulate. And so, um, all of this, I found this out quickly, but I, I, I don't know if I would have had the same. I'd like to think that I would have handled it the same way if I had just been, boom, knocked unconscious when the bomb went off and then woke up at Walter Reed eight days later and, and said what happened. But I'm, I'm as horrifying as that day was and the sounds I heard and the smells and everything about it. Mm. I cherish that day because it made me who I am today. And it made me thankful truly for every moment I have left on this planet. Most of us never learned how to train our brains, which is why most of us needlessly settle, struggle, and worse, suffer. My name is Chris Doris, and I wanna make brain training mainstream. This is my series, Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I'm interviewing badasses from all walks of life on what mental toughness means to them and their unique approaches to strengthening their minds. Hey everyone, welcome back to Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I am your host, Chris Doris, and before I introduce today's guest, let's t address our uh, the elephant in the room, shall we? Yeah, right, right, nothing needs to be avoided, so if it's true that you aren't getting the daily dose, mental toughness tips in 30 seconds or less, delivered to your email inbox every morning of the year, first thing, like 6 or 7 a.m., wherever you are in the world. If that's not happening, let's just go ahead and fix that. Oh, and if you're not also getting my uh, weekly blog posts, come out every Tuesday, and naturally, if you're not getting notifications of the new Tough Talks podcast episodes, we can totally address that so nearly effortlessly, virtually effortlessly, by going to ChristopherDoris.com backslash lists, L-I-S-T-S, ChristopherDoris.com backslash lists. Name, email, click, boom, all the goodies are yours. Our guest today is a fascinating human being. He's the author of this book right here in case you're watching this. It's still standing, the story of uh, Staff Sergeant John Creasel. That's, the, that's him right there. That's the picture of him standing there. This is a cool, it's a beautiful story. You can read about the, the meaning of this picture, the significance of this picture. And there he is standing with his prosthetic legs. Let me, just, let me read you uh, his bio here. On December 2nd, 2006, the vehicle that Creasel and four of his comrades were riding in encountered a 200-pound improvised explosive device, IED. It was in Iraq. The blast killed two of Creasel's best friends, and he was severely injured, losing both legs, suffering numerous broken bones and internal injuries. He was transported to two field hospitals in Iraq, where he died three times on the operating table before doctors saved his life. He woke up in Walter Reed Army Medical Center after an eight-day medically-induced coma where he learned about the death of his two comrades and the severity of his injuries. The guy who wasn't supposed to survive and was told he probably would be in a wheelchair the rest of his life walked out of Walter Reed Army Medical Center after nine months. His transition from military to civilian life offered him many challenges, but his amazing support system, positive attitude, and sense of humor allowed him to back, bounce back stronger than ever. 
In 2010, he was elected to the Minnesota House of Representatives, but decided not to seek re-election when his family said they wanted to spend more time with him. He's the director of veteran services for a county in suburban Minneapolis, Minnesota, a part-time personality on KFAN radio, motivational speaker, and co-author again of the book, Still Standing, the story of Staff Sergeant John Creasel, winner of eight national book awards. I have a sneaky suspicion we're going to have a little bit to talk about here. And a uh, quick shout out to uh, John Dynas, who's um, a, a, a friend and colleague of mine, a sales team leader, a phenomenal, epic sales team leader at Salesforce for having created this introduction. So thank you, John Dynas. Best day ever, baby. All right, let's go find the other John. John Creasel, where you at, man? Yep, found him. There he is, right over there, everybody. John Creasel, what's up, my man? How are you? Well, this is the best damn day of my life, as a matter of fact. Thank you for asking. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Or as our mutual friend and reason for this uh, episode occurring, John Dynas, as John, John Dynas's son came up with his new, own version of, so I, I have shirts that say BDDOML, hashtag BDDOML, best damn day of my life. His son came up with his own version of it, which is hashtag BDE, BDE, best day ever. Yep, that's yep. that's what my little girl will say too. She's almost three. If we're doing something like oh. we had a picnic on the on the deck, to best picnic ever. Everything's best <laughs> ever. So it's, it's good. That's I love awesome. the enthusiasm. That's, that's brilliant. I love that. Right on. Well, shout out to your daughter then for that, and shout out to John Dynas. Thank you, brother for uh for creating this how do you guys know each other uh we have a mutual friend mike becker who they um they went to college together and right. they set up this annual golf trip and there was a couple openings so mike invited me and one of my close army buddies tim nelson and we went on this trip we didn't know anyone except mike and now we're i feel like these guys are family with me like they're awesome we look forward to that trip every year the may day golf classic we travel somewhere in the u.s and get the heck out of dodge and have a great time wow that's cool so where was this one biloxi mississippi Woo! yep stayed at the Beau rivage got to gamble have some cocktails and then in the morning go play golf and have more cocktails and <laughs> yeah. that's the way you do it baby yes oh man good for you that's beautiful so um there's so many things I want to talk to you about. Your, this book of yours is remarkable, man. Thank you. What, 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 a, what an amazing piece of work. Um, before I forget, though, I, got, I just got to jump to my favorite part. My favorite thing in the whole damn book. Page 120. It's this picture of you standing there wearing this shirt that says, Leg story, story, 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> That is so I laughed so damn hard when I saw that. I gotta ask you, how much made you make off of that? <laughs> well, now the speeches are much more than ten dollars. So That's I've upgraded good. the I could get a different <laughs> shirt now. <laughs> Did it work though? Yes. Oh yeah, there'd be people and I didn't ever charge, but it was more of just like an icebreaker conversation. Because still I wear I wear shorts all the time. Otherwise, I shred pants. Um mm -hmm. I'll wear pants if I need to, if it's a special occasion, wedding, whatever. Um, but there will be people that usually kids will say, what happened to your legs? Oh my, or they'll go, mom, look, yeah. his legs. And the parents, nine out of 10 times, they're like, oh my God, they're like, don't, what are you doing? What do you, and I'll, I'll say, do you have any questions? Like what I want to make it uh, nice and easy for them. It's, it is very, they're cool legs. And it's I'm very different. And that's all right. Kids, that's the great thing about kids. They call it as they see it. And yeah, so, man. so uh, yeah, I end up answering a lot of questions, but I enjoy the heck out do of you it. Ever, do you ever mess with the parents even just for a second and go, how about some discipline? How about some <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've messed with kids. I've messed with kids. Like if it's a teenager where they know better and sometimes like, what was the one? I think they were they were bordering on the age of knowing better, but maybe not. And they were like, "What's wrong with you?" 
And I said, I leaned in. I said, I didn't eat my vegetables. And, oh, so and great. The, <laughs> and the kid was like, them. oh, yeah. I bet they crushed, you know, that was 13, 14 years ago. I bet that kid eats all of their green beans, <laughs> or their broccoli, <laughs> whatever. You know, sense changing lives, man. That's what we do. Amen, baby. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's the calling. Right. And using humor, man, there's so much in so, such great intelligence and levity, right? And, and, and humor. And, and I want to get back to that. Um, th- I mean, that'll come up because I'm going to ask you some how questions, you know, uh, because what you're doing with your reality is, is absolutely remarkable. You know, I, um, I presume you're, you're, you're really busy because I know I had to, I didn't have to, I requested to cancel because I had some strange facial growth that I, because of my vanity, I didn't want to, this cold sort of be popping, you know, the last time we were scheduled. So, I, you know, I, I requested like the day of, which I don't do normally. So thank you for your graciousness. But dude, it, but you were busy. I said, I gave you a few times. Like, no, nah, nah, I'll come back from Denver. No, nah, I'm going to be away that week. So you got a lot going on. So you have an active speaking schedule, I presume. Yes, active speaking schedule. And then May just ended up being one of the largest travel slash vacation months. Good. I've had my wife and I got, got away alone a couple of times. I love to travel. But yeah, there was a lot of speeches in May. So yeah, it's it's... It's a blessing. I'm busy nonstop. I have a full time job, I, and then I do my speaking. I have a, a small, ra- you know, radio presence uh, an appearance on KFAN here in, in the Twin Cities every yeah, week. Cool. That's cool. So it is. Uh, I like to be busy, and uh, I definitely and are. are busy right now. Yeah. So I was as I was researching you, and again, I want to hold up. So some people listen to this on podcasts, you know. Uh, audio. So the book is is entitled Still Standing, subtitled The Story of SSG uh, Staff Sergeant uh, John Creasel. Yes. And as I was reading it and I was studying your, your online presence, your website's amazing, by the way. It's really, Thank really, you. really phenomenal. And so is the video on your LinkedIn. That's that's badass. Thank you. That's really badass. In, in fact, I want to get to it later. There's something you sure. said there that's pretty critical. So good stuff. I got to tell you, man, so in my work as a mental toughness trainer, I use a lot of mantras, okay, because they're very functional, short phrases that contain like volumes of value and meaning, you know, so they're really good functional tools to help us stay reminded of things that are most important for us to remember. And I got to tell you, man, the one that just came up for me over and over and over again as I was researching you and thinking of you is the following. Every set of circumstances can be created from if viewed masterfully. And I believe that's without exception. It's a big if. Every set of circumstances, can we can create magic or excellence out of anything that happens if, capital I, capital F, if we respond, not react, but respond to those circumstances at some point with grace, mastery, enthusiasm, and creativity. 100%. December 2nd, 2006 was your accident, it was the event, right? You lost both your legs and some friends too. Yes. You died three times on the operating table. Do you have any recollection of any of that? I don't. Thank goodness. Yeah. I, I briefly kind of remember being brought in there, but they basically put me out on the helicopter. That's per, the helicopter was basically the start of eight days of being in a medically induced coma. Right. At, at Walter Reed. Yep. And the, t- the two field hospitals in Iraq and then launched dual Germany and then Walter Reed. Oh, okay. Racked up some frequent flyer miles there. Yeah, yeah she did. <laughs> in that video that I mentioned that you have, so if you, when, when you go to John's LinkedIn page and you click on his image, the video opens up and it's beautifully done. And at the very end of it, the very, very end, you say this, uh, I woke up and none of this matters, meaning I have no legs, my arms jacked, internal injuries. None of this matters. 
I'm alive and I'm thankful for that. There's one path and it's forward. How rapidly or how much time passed before you were able, after you discover, you wake up after eight days in an induced coma and you realize the severity of your injuries, how soon was it or how much time passed before you said, okay, I'm alive and I'm thankful and there's one path and it's forward? It was, uh, it, it was quite quick because I, and I, I'm very thankful that I was awake for everything. After I was knocked unconscious briefly after the bomb blast. I, I don't remember flying through the air and I don't remember actually hitting the ground, but I remember waking up on the ground, still hearing rocks falling, rocks hitting the ground, rocks hitting metal. So it sounded like a hailstorm. seeing my injuries, hearing my friend next to me fighting for his life. Um, I was, I was quite certain that I was going to die that day. Mm -hmm. And so fast forward to when I woke up at Walter Reed, I saw that my, both of my legs had been completely amputated. I had casts on my arms. Uh, I was told that I may not walk again because my pelvis had been broken so badly. They weren't optimistic that I would be able to, that the pelvis could support the prosthesis that I would be Oh, wow. required to wear to, to be able to ambulate. And so um, all of this, I found this out quickly, but I, I, I don't know if I would have had the same, I'd like to think that I would have handled it the same way if I had just been boom, knocked unconscious when the bomb went off and then woke up at Walter Reed eight days later and, and said what happened. But I'm, I'm as horrifying as that day was and the sounds I heard and the smells and everything about it. I cherish that day because it made me who I am today. And it made me thankful truly for every moment I have left on this planet. And so that's why when I woke up at Walter Reed, I feel like it was easier for me to really have a sense of reality at that point and deal with the situation I was in and not, not really fall into that trap of poor me, or I wish this didn't happen, or I wish this was easier. What, we can wish all we want. That's not the, the reality. And that's not going to change the situation. I had to come up with a plan and, and focus on moving forward. Otherwise I was going to be wasting that second chance at life that two of my best friends did not get. Mm. And so truly their sacrifice on that day and my memories of that day made me um, really put things in perspective for me. But you didn't have to. And, and, I, and I'm going to slow this down, man, with your, with your permission, because I, I think yep. this is like, this is the thing, you know, I promised my Tough Talks tribe audience that they're going to walk away with every episode from every episode with a thing. They got a, like a thing, right? Some thing to, to go use that'll change the way they're experiencing reality to make life easier for them, make life better for them, you know, strengthen the way they interpret reality. And I really think that at the core of this very bit of this conversation is the thing. You didn't choose to be Lieutenant Dan. And, and be, mis you know, from, if, if you're not getting the reference, it's Forrest Gump. Yep. Right. And, and, he, and he comes around and visits. He, he visited my room, Gary Sinise did. He goes through, he's- Gary Sinise did? Yes. He has a very active presence at, at Walter Reed to, uh, <laughs> so that, that movie changed him having to get into that role. Uh, wonderful guy. But anyway, go, go on. So I just had to toss That's that out. That's so cool, man. It's very cool. Yeah. He's a very cool guy. That's that's so great. That's so great. So his character, Lieutenant Dan, didn't respond. He he didn't respond the way you did, at all, right? In the movie, correct. Yeah. He went the other extreme, which 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 is understandable. Correct. Yes. I haven't done any research on it. Uh, maybe you have some insight into it. Like, what are the odds? Like, what's the percentage of people who have accidents similar to yours and Lieutenant Dan's? You know, and and how do most of them respond do you have any i i, I think do. from personal experience seeing it, i was on the amputee ward ward 57 at walter reed um back when it was walter reed army medical center it's now since that's gone and they're they built a new fancy one down the road but when i was there ward 57 if you were missing a limb you were on that ward and then during our physical therapy and occupational therapy each day which becomes your job 
um, you're mm -hmm. surrounded by people missing limbs. Someone might be missing an arm and a leg or two legs and an arm or uh, a hand or all, and almost all of them handled it very similar to how I did. I mean, when I saw them, I wasn't spending time in their rooms, you know, because you have your tough days, of course, but, and we would encourage each other. So if someone's having a tough day, you know, if someone's missing one leg below the knee, they'd be called rug burn or paper cut. Um, and they'd be, you know, the gallows humor, but it, but it works, you know, and if you're yeah. sitting there kind of sucking wind, having a tough morning, not giving it a hundred percent in, in your PT, the guy in the bed next to you is looking over going, let's go cupcake. Come on. And you, and you, you motivate each other. And so that, that sense of humor, that kind of grim, that mm. gallows, dark sense of humor. Uh, and then the people around you with similar, but different experiences and injuries, we all helped each other get through it. And everybody seemed to have the same really cheerful, uplifting, just kind of, Hey, we're on, I like playing slot machines and, and, and it's fun when you hit three spins because you're getting these spins and you're not having to put more money in the machine. I've been on free spins for 15 years. Oh, and, I, and I think that's the way that all of these guys and, and gals look at it as well. I like that analogy a lot. And um, so you had that that real deep camaraderie. You you referenced that in the book. You know your your incredible support system, sense of humor as well. You reference as like some of the reasons that you're able to create. Um, it's still a choice, though. Right? It's still a choice. It is, yeah. It's still a choice. It doesn't matter how easy. Or, like so, the people around you helped you, and you helped them. Yes. To do something that's very critical to all of this, which I suspect is probably central to a lot of your messages when you speak, which is the choice. Correct. Right. And that we, we can't control the things that happen to us, but we always can control how we respond. And that's really I wanted to be I don't want to be known as the guy without legs, which I mean, I am. Uh, but. I wanted to be defined by how I responded to it. Cause there are a lot of people that look at it and, and they're like, how do you, how are you always so happy? And how are you always so like smiling and, and having a great time and doing this? That's a, those are great questions. And, and it's a very fair question. And the fact that I'm, you know, referring to the fact that I I'm doing this despite missing both legs, uh -huh. but I look at it as I, and, and there was a speaker and I really, I wish, I wish I remember the name, but I heard a speaker and it was another combat amputee and they had responded when someone asked that someone actually asked them that question directly. Uh, he had said that he didn't understand how people don't have a great day or don't have a great life with all of their limbs and without having to go through what they did. And I found it pretty remarkable and I think that's just, it, it, it kind of goes back to that perspective. I'm so thankful every day I wake up, I'm reminded of what happened. I, I truly do not have PTSD. Thank goodness. I, the, the only PTSD I have is from the Minnesota Vikings in my first marriage. That's it. Other than that, from what happened to me, <laughs> wow, <laughs> I, 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 I'm very lucky. I put in a lot of work in the hospital. They handle the mental health thing a lot better. Um, but I think a lot of it was right off the bat. I realized how lucky I was to be alive. Two of my best friends had died. So I better not sit and feel sorry for myself and complain. And if I want to get through this and get back to Minnesota and start my life again, I need to come up with a plan and I need to work my ass off every day and put in the time in the, in the physical therapy room and the occupational therapy lab, all of that stuff. And it's people get, the unknown is kind of scary for, for people, for a lot of people, you know, it's that that's what a lot of stress or anxiety is caused by not knowing if we knew the outcome, there'd be some, some peace to it, you know, what's going to happen, but by coming up with a plan, dealing with the reality and not the, I wish this or poor me, or I wish that, or this would be a lot easier if I was only missing one, like, no, going, okay, here's what I'm dealing with. Here's my plan moving forward. Now I need to get my ass to work so I can get the heck out of here and get back to my life. It, you know, it would be so easy for you to not choose that. So congratulations for the way that you 
uh, not only decide to respond to your reality, which everyone would consider to be tragic, um, or maybe not, I don't know, it's like people like maybe Byron Katie might not identify it as tragic, but would support anyone who did. But, um, and congratulations and thank you for the way that you choose to use it to help right. empower people. So I, I, I'm really interested in knowing you know, if, if it's if it's even possible for you to articulate here for us as as cons it doesn't have to be concise, but I mean, like, what are what are one or two of the most important things that you want people to get, to understand, to know, to practice, to do, to take away from your experience? So when you travel all over the the the, the planet, you know, doing these your talks, what are if you're going to like reduce it down? your message or messages, what are the nuggets? What are the golden nuggets? I, I think my first one is life is good because it is. Uh, even when you think it's not, it's, it's a good life. And if you focus on the good, you know, and that's what I try to do. One of the things I tell people is on those tough, because we, we all have, I'd be lying if I said every day was easier. Every day I have a wonderful... Yeah, it is a wonderful day, relatively speaking, compared to other days I've had, and I'm happy to be alive. But things happen. It's how you handle those, really, that defines who you are. And, and on the days, sometimes where there is just a funk, if you're just in a funk, whether you didn't sleep right or weather or the weather's bad or whatever it is, you still, you make the choice, attitude's a choice. You make the decision to have a great day. Mm -hmm. And, and, I'll, and that starts first thing in the morning. And so if it's like a tough, tough day and it sounds extremely corny, but taking a post-it note, something as simple as that and writing three to five things in your life that you're thankful for, you know, whether it's your son, daughter, wife, husband, uh, things that bring you joy, things that make you want to wake up in that morning and kick that day's butt, mm -hmm. you put that post-it note on your bathroom mirror. And that's the first thing you see when you start your next day. And that positive thought in the morning sets the tone for your entire day. So I, that, that, that's a big one. And then when you do have a rough day and you're focused on the good, and it's something we should be doing year round, not just on our tough days, it's doing a personal inventory, being thankful for the people in our life, the blessings in our life. Then when you do have a bad day, it's nothing but a tiny bump in the road because you're focused on the good. And so it, attitude is a choice. Attitude is everything. And I, when I first joined the military, I had friends that joined at the same time as me and they picked jobs that were maybe more in demand and required a little more uh, higher scores. What I, I joined the infantry because I wanted to be a boots on the ground guy. I wanted to be the one that fights in the wars yeah. and they, some of them got signing bonuses and other stuff. I got a t-shirt and I was pissed off. I was annoyed at that because I was like, what the heck fast forward to a few years back when I was, cleaning out my closet, doing some reorganizing. This is probably 2016. Uh, I found a box of old keepsakes I had, and that shirt was in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, boy. I opened the shirt, and on the back, now, it of course, had the phone number to call the recruiter so you could join, but on the back said, attitude is everything. And, it, and I chuckled because that shirt at the very beginning of my career, that pissed me off. Mm -hmm. And I was annoyed because I would have rather had 500 dollars cold hard cash I got that t-shirt and it was just one of those aha moments where I chuckled because truly attitude is what got me through what it, what I got through so that attitude's a choice life is good and in my speeches what I try to make sure is that I'm not comparing what happened to me to, to what's going to happen to anybody else in that room or in that meeting or on that zoom call because Let's face it, what happened to me is not going to happen to any of those people. It's just the fact of the matter. Um, but we all go through adversity. We've done it individually. That's one of the few guarantees in life is adversity. We've mm -hmm. faced it. We will face it again, collectively, individually, as families, whatever. Um, and it really doesn't matter how big or how small that adversity we face is. What matters is the attitude that we bring to the table that will help us overcome that adversity and overcome anything in life. And the, and the positive attitude, a sense of humor, because sometimes all you can do is laugh, where more stuff just gets heaped on you and you just, you just got to laugh about it because there's nothing else you can do. And you laugh, you feel better about it. 
it's not going to solve the problem, but it's going to allow you to get your bearings, come up with your plan and then move forward. You know, there was absolutely nothing corny to me sounding uh, about your suggestion, which is extremely practical, which is to go to the effort. I call corny. I think it's the opposite of that, brother. Well, I good. I appreciate it. Fucking discipline. <laughs> Seriously, it's slowing down enough to do the work. It's the work, right? It's like absolutely. So if it's a poster, whatever it is, is doing the work to shift your mind. Hundred percent into gratitude. So I'm really so happy to hear you bring that up. And you also used enthusiasm. These are two of my favorite states. And my whole life is about helping people elevate their states and choose to create the good ones that have us be amazing with less effort and faster. Right. Have you ever seen uh, the short film? It's only six, uh, six or six and a half minutes long, created by Louis Schwartzberg, who's a famous short film creator. Um, and it's called, it's called Gratitude. Gratitude HD. I don't think I have. Okay, so I'm going to put that in the show notes. After we're done, I'm going to send it to you. I'll Perfect. email the link to you. It is, I use it constantly, constantly in talks, in coaching, in everything. Uh, I've watched that video hundreds of times, and I still get a little choked up. It's spectacular. So Louis does the cinematographer, cin cinematography. And it is narrated by his, like the perfect person to do this. He's an Austrian um, monk, Dr. Or Brother David Steindlerast. You're going to love it. I'm excited uh, to see it. Yeah, man. So uh, I will also include it in the show notes. And if you, if you just want to Google it and find it, it it's effortless. Just Google uh, Gratitude HD. You know, perfect. Half minute video. It's absolutely spectacular. And what it's all about is what you're saying. Which is, you know, so do the work, right? Start, the, that's critical. I love that. What an what a, what a incredibly valuable suggestion as a takeaway, as a practical, like to do, right? Is Here's another mantra you're reminding me of right now that I love to use, which is create the state, don't wait. Right. Don't wait to see how shit goes before I create the state. If this is the best day ever, like you're talking about your daughter. Absolutely. This is the best picnic ever. This is the best day ever. Right? This is the best haircut ever. This is the best dental appointment visit ever. Yeah. This is the best pen ever. It can, be. <laughs> it can be if you have it be. But it takes the work. Our, our, you know, I'm convinced, man, that you know, our uh, cultures, we are all conditioned to experience, to shift away from like your daughter's beautiful, effortless, automatic default response to what is with, with enthusiasm over to being problematic, experiencing life problematically. So you're describing the work of getting back to. Right. Right. Do the work in the morning to, 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 to slow down and say, what am I truly grateful for? And I want to hold that, keep that post-it note in my pocket and stay in that state of gratitude as I go through the day so that I'm more able to respond. And that's what I'm so impressed about you. So, you know, in, in, the, new, in the new intro, the updated intro, January 2018, I presume that was written. Was that the, the new one by Jim Cosmo? Yes. Right. At some at one point, the third paragraph, he starts it by saying, "Everyone reacts differently to tragedy." <clears throat> Everyone, re yeah, that's true. And I'm pretty damn interested in that fact. He's 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 very very right. Right. And I would say that yours is not even a reaction is a response, right? I don't know if you agree with that, but- it, I do, yeah. Okay, because I, I, I believe that, you know, one of the great practices we can do is strengthen our ability to respond, response dash ability. And I think a reaction feels more of a knee jerk type thing. That's maybe like a, a reflexive type thing where, it, where a response is something you condition yourself for. So you're prepared to have a response. Perfect. So what else do you do in your life that strengthens your response dash ability that helps you like, like the gratitude in the morning 
Um, what do you do? What else do you do throughout the days when things don't necessarily go the way you wanted to, so that you're more response dash able to life as opposed to reactive? I try to be. I, I I am an optimistic person, and and I I think I'm optimistic by nature, but I'm a realist. I deal oh. with I deal with the facts. I deal oh. with the situation, and while I'm hopeful, and I, I don't I don't think I'm wired to be just like expecting bad, except with Minnesota sports, where <laughs> I'm expecting things to go bad. You know, mm-hmm. that doesn't do you any good. I would rather be hopeful for a good outcome, but anything I have control over, I'm going to do my best to, to make it the best outcome as possible. And, and wherever I can have enthusiasm, be prepared, uh, for whatever I face. Now, some things we're not going to be able to be prepared for. It's something that's totally out of left field, but I think our life experiences and most of all, our mindset is what then prepares us for how to respond appropriately because shit happens. And, and a lot of times, yeah, we're not prepared for it. But overall, if you have the right mindset, the right enthusiasm, uh, act with integrity, mm. uh, be upfront and honest, th- those are things that will serve you well when it is time to respond. And if things don't go well, you're going to get the benefit of the doubt because you're a good, hardworking person acting with integrity. Generally, that's how things will work out if you do things the right way. You just reminded me of a great saying that I think I learned from my former coach, Steve Chandler. And it goes like this. The pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist is sure it'll go away. Whereas the realist is like, what's the matter with you people? Sets their sails and falls ass across the sea. Have you heard that before? I think so, yep. I, I couldn't love that more. One sec, the uh, countertop delivery people, I just have to let in. Getting a new, new countertop in my bathroom. So I just got to show them where the bathroom is. I will be right back. I'm very sorry. No, don't be. Everything happens exactly as it should. Nothing needs to be anything other than exactly what it is. This is the best damn thing that could have happened. That my guest is has left in the middle of a podcast recording. Best damn thing could have happened. <laughs> Every set of circumstances can be created from if viewed masterfully. Maybe this will be my inspiration to get new countertops as well. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to elaborate yet upon that. I want to elaborate when it, when it gets back with the whole distinction between the pessimist, the optimist and the realist. I think that's a huge distinction. Oh, we might need to ask him about that football back there. You know, I'm debating on whether or not to bring up the fact that the Philadelphia Eagles beat the Vikings, but spanked the Vikings 38 to 7 in the NFC Championship game a few years ago, the year that the Eagles won Super Bowl 52. I'm not sure if I thought about it several times. I'm not sure if I should do it. It feels like it's a little disrespectful. I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know, this, I feel like this is a moment where it'd be handy to be a comedian, right? To have like a whole like string of, of good jokes to tell, but I, but I'm not, and I, and I don't, for some reason, I have great difficulty remembering jokes. Oh, it's a mental thing. Maybe I need a mental coach. If anybody knows of one that you can re- refer me to, it'd be helpful. Yeah, and maybe now would be a, would also be a good time. <laughs> this has never happened before. My my guest just up and bounces. <laughs> How fun! Yeah, you can look up Gratitude HD. If we have another six minutes, you can watch Louis Schwartzberg. Great video on that. Yeah, all right, so let's let's talk about a couple of the words while we're waiting for John to get back. A couple of the states that he's brought up. Right, two of my favorite states ever: gratitude and enthusiasm. We talked about the gratitude, enthusiasm. We have not. Uh, it, it might be my favorite of all available states, the human emotional states on the spectrum, right? Enthusiasm is, 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 is profound. And it's also got a really cool name. Enthusiasm, the word itself, comes from the Greek word entheos. 
which translates into the creator within. How amazing is that? So when I choose, again, the operative word choose, right? When I choose to think my way into a state of enthusiasm, John, we're just breaking down the word enthusiasm. While you were gone, we had some fun. Um, and we're talking about enthusiasm since you brought it up uh, and how the word itself actually comes from the Greek word entheos, which translates into the creator within. So when I choose to think my way into a state of enthusiasm by choosing my attitude, by choosing to be you know, grateful and excited about life, then I'm activating all forms of creative genius. So that, that's what we were riffing on here in your absence. How are the countertops? To the, how are they looking? It's so far, they, they look good. It's the same ones I have in the kitchen. So I didn't want to get too fancy. I wanted to pick the same color. Yeah. And of course, delivery window was between one and five. I found out yesterday. Oh, it's it's going to, they're going to show up in the middle of our talk. But well, see, that's the best damn thing that could have happened. Absolutely. Because my countertop is going to be it. The, the, the beauty, right, is, is you put me on the spot here, brother, to walk the goddamn talk. <laughs> I was laughing a little bit because I was saying this has never happened before. I, I have never, and I don't want to edit it out either. I have never had a podcast guest go, I'll be right back in the middle of an interview. Yep. <laughs> I'm very so, sorry. Don't be. <laughs> Brag about it because, in fact, you can just say you're welcome to me because you get, you created, you co created an opportunity to literally walk the talk. Like I had an option there, I had a choice. That's all we've been talking about all day here, me and you is choice, choosing how to respond to life. And you just gave me a choice. That was not premeditated. You didn't tell me, yo, man, just heads up. I might need to go like answer the door. And I, I meant to do that. I forgot. Well, I'm glad you didn't that. though. You see how this is, this is, this is the gift, right? The problem is the gift. It can be, that's not a mantra. The problem is the gift. Have, uh, asterisk, if you'll have it be. <laughs> so you gave me the option at first. I thought, well, well, okay, now what? And I did struggle a little bit because I did say to the audience, this would be a good time to be a comedian and like know some jokes, which I don't. You could have made fun of me, talked about. I did it a little bit. I, I, all right, I'll just, I'll come clean because you're going to see this shit anyway. I, I asked the audience, I wish I could have gotten responses and some advice here. I said, I thought a couple of times about bringing up the fact that the Philadelphia Eagles uh, happened to demolish the Vikings in the NFC Championship a few years ago. 38 to 7, yeah. What time was that game? I think it was 38 to 7. And, and yeah, and that's the year that we won the Super Bowl. So I, was, I was debating on whether or not to bring that up. But, so. It's all good. I watched your team win a Super Bowl in our state, the stadium I helped in your state legislature when I was a state representative. That was one of the pieces of legislation I worked on. And so I got to watch oh, your you. team win a Super Bowl in my building. And, uh, yeah, it was a interesting day. That wow, wow. So yeah, all right. Well, let's just stay on that subject since we're talking about the Vikings. You had a very amazing experience. Uh, you were invited. So one of the rituals for the Vikings is they have this the Yaller horn. horn. Yep. The what? What is it the called? Yaller Yaller horn. Yaller. Yep. Yaller. G -J. G -J. Tell the story. Tell the story. So it's. It, old Viking mythology, you know, that they, they blow the horn before battle. And so they have that at the, at the, the Viking stadium they had at the Metrodome and the now U S bank stadium. And they honor some, they have an honored guest uh, blow the horn, but the, the Yowler horn before the, uh, before the team comes out of the tunnel. And so that I got to do that on December 2nd, 2007, which was my, my, first alive day the one year anniversary of of the wow. day we hit that ied in iraq and so it, it was awesome uh i got to be on the field for it got to do that and then at the 10 years and that the the vikings honored me tim nelson who was in the seat behind me when we hit the bomb and then the Ristead and mcdonough families who their their sons uh passed away in the bomb blast we got to be on the field 10 years from the date wow. um yeah, so that was that's, uh, that that's, be that's beautiful. That's it was very cool. cool. It's a very it's a Vikings organization. They're very pro military. They're just um, and they're game day ops people. When they do stuff like that, like it's just it's awesome. Cried my eyes out on the field. 
uh, just that reaction of just being on the field, like the player looking up into the stands and seeing people also tearing up and where it was just, uh, it was a lot, just a special day. That's fantastic. I have a, I have a bunch of Vikings fans. So we have, a, we have some good jibber jab going back. Uh, it's always light. And, uh, yeah, you're you're uh, you're a kind crew. You know, you mentioned in the book. Uh, I guess it was the alive, the first alive day, which is a cool term, by the way. I like that. It's like the, I, I'm still alive. I get to be alive. Yes. Uh, is that the day that Bobby Wade caught a touchdown? Uh, I think he might because it was against the Lions. Yeah, it was so 07. Much. He was That's definitely that. on the Vikings at that time because well, he made his way through the Bears, and then he ended up. On the Vikings, I wonder if you, yeah, well, I know Adrian Peterson scored at least once, I believe twice. I don't know if he did. You said, all right, Minnesota, Tavares Jackson adds touchdown tosses to Bobby Wade. Sydney oh, yep, West, there we go. Uh, Andre Allison enters the books with a 103-yard kickoff return to seal the romp. Yeah, and Adrian had, um, he ran 116 yards. <laughs> yeah. But Bobby Wade, when I saw Bobby Wade, I thought, oh, man, how cool, because I know Bobby Wade. I worked That's out with awesome. Bobby Wade, the gym right here down the street, Chandler. He's from here. Very cool. And his dad, Bobby Wade Sr., so that's pretty neat. Make sure that they get a, a heads up on this. That's awesome. Yeah. You got a purple heart. I did, yes. Yep, the medal you never want to be awarded, but it's an honor to receive. Yep, President Bush actually was the one that pinned it on me. Yeah, I saw that. You guys are boys. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, I got to meet him two other times too. Very nice guy. And uh, just he remembered how, you. He remembered you. He seemed to for sure. Uh, Cause you can tell, and I was in politics. I get it. Um, where you, and everyone wants to be remembered, but some people expect to be remembered and, and that's tough. So uh, I don't expect to be remembered. And, and sometimes I get surprised in a situation like that. Yeah. He, he seemed to remember my condition the, the previous time. And he, mm -hmm. yeah, he was just very cool. And it was unique. It was very interesting to be at the White House. We got a tour and we didn't know we we're going to get to meet him. This was like the third time I got to meet him. And all of a sudden they like moved people out of the room, whatever. And he came in, he was about to go get on the helicopter. So that room where they walk out of the White House, cross the lawn to get on the helicopter, he came in. And he had all the cameras and everybody leave. And you could see the emotion on his face. Mm -hmm. And there, there was like 10 of us, 10 to 15 maybe wounded warriors. And he had said that he's very sorry for what we had to go through. Um, and and he, the way he phrased it, where he was like, based on the information we had, we had to do this. We had to send you there. I'm so sorry you've all had to go through this. And you see the president that these decisions weigh on him and you see him as a person. Mm. We don't ever see that on TV because it's always press conferences and whatever. Right. And it's got to, it's got to be all business because you got to put on the front for the American people to show them everything's fine. But to see kind of behind the curtain uh, it was, it's not a job I would ever want. That's for sure. You could see it weighed on him heavy and, and, uh, but he was just very cool. Good sense of humor too. He joked the one we're all wearing shorts and like polo shirts dressed appropriately for the white house. But there was one guy missing an arm and he was dressed like in a suit and president Bush is going around chatting with each person. He gets to him. He goes, what do we have here? Wall street stockbroker. <laughs> like it was, it was perfect. That was a good you know, right there. We've been giving that kid shit the whole time for oh, dressing up so much. That's so funny, man. Yeah. That's, that's great. Well, thank you for, for this conversation. Uh, thank you again for the temporary departure because you gave me the opportunity. to make a <laughs> <of my> own. <laughs> I'll send you pictures of what the countertop looks like. I think it's going to be fantastic. Okay. That's perfect. <laughs> Good deal. So uh, where do we want to direct people? Your book is available on Amazon, of course, still yes. standing uh, the story of SSG, which is staff sergeant. Yes. Uh, John Creasel, uh, available on Amazon, and, and you are available, obviously, you're traveling all over the country to uh, as a speaker. Yes. Yeah. My website is uh, johnmcreasel.com, written beautifully on the, the whiteboard behind you. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. 
all of the all the social medias. Um, but yeah, it's if people are interested in hearing my story, having me come out to your company or organization, uh, go to my website, johnmcreasel.com, put in a request. My guy, Jim, will be in touch with you to work out details. But uh, I love it. The, the key takeaway in it, I make sure, because if I go and tell people just the straight up story of what happened to me, it's very heavy and it's sad because it was an awful day and I lost two of my close friends. But I make sure to inject humor throughout because that is what got me through the whole ordeal and got me to this life that now every day I wake up, I'm thankful to be alive and, and I appreciate my life. And so I try to teach people the lessons that I've learned without them having to go through what I did, but by doing so in a way that I did by laughing when appropriate and, and injecting humor, because that is, that is truly what got me through it and, and why I'm a big part of why I'm able to live this wonderful life right now. I'm a, I'm a lucky, lucky man. Yeah, that's cool. And, 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 and I, I also believe that the, there's a strong positive relationship uh, between the attitude, the high states that we choose and how lucky we get. I agree. I believe so too. I'm going to send you a gift <clears throat> and, and I'm going to send it and everyone gets it because of you. So because you're an avid golfer, uh, I did a, uh, I created a great audio program on, it's called The Edge, Mental Toughness for Miraculous Golf. So I'm going to send you a copy of that. Perfect. And then I'll also put it in the show notes. So everyone who's a golfer who uh, listens or watches this, you can get free access to that as well. Perfect. Compliments of uh, John Creasel. Brother, you're amazing. You're amazing. Thank you so much for having me on. This was a blast. Sorry again for the uh, counter. No, man, I'm telling you, it's a gift. I, I, I you know, and I would rate myself. I, yeah, I'm going to give myself a pretty good, not an A plus. I still have my own work to do. I'll give myself at least a B plus on how I responded to that. You'll you'll enjoy watching it. I can't wait. <laughs> You're gonna fast forward right to the to that. <laughs> so what did he do? How did he do it? <laughs> I'm gonna ask my team not to edit that out. <laughs> That's people watching me do the work. All right, brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. There's another first. go get the, the new countertop <laughs> that was fun though yeah you know, right that's like i had a similar experience with steve chandler when we were doing an audio program where some the, oh i was on yeah 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 phone call dropped it was being recorded via telephone and the call dropped so i disappeared it was my call uh, my phone that dropped and he made fun so i was on the, i was on the hot seat there. How'd I do? <laughs> there was a little bit of silence. It gave us all an opportunity to do the work. So, um, what a neat guy, huh? Attitude is a choice. Life is good. Count your blessings. Gratitude every day. Every The power of humor. And, and here's a sentence. Here's a comment that he made that really, really popped for me. I wanna, I'm going to use this. I'm going to work with this. Adversity is a guarantee. I love that. Adversity is a guarantee. <laughs> so what are you going to do with it? <laughs> now, I know adversity itself, the word, the term, it is a construct. So it's just like your opinion, right? It's an interpretation that something is adverse. Right? What I totally agree with is events will occur in life that would make that, that would be real that will be really easy for you to interpret as adversity and what are you going to do with that stuff and that's at the core of mental toughness isn't it All right like when shit doesn't go the way you want it to that's it when shit doesn't go the way you wanted it to who are you being good stuff man what a hero <laughs> a great attitude huh? fun and funny and <laughs> he got up and left <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks, as always, for uh, following the podcast, for tuning in to Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. And until next time, as always, create miracles. 